Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. You know, this is a very special week. This is uh, the week of the resurrection. And of course, we always commemorate Good Friday. This is that day. Now, some of you are watching this on Thursday night. Others of you will be watching it Friday morning, but whatever. We are remembering that before the great resurrection of Christ, there was the crucifixion, the greatest sign of God's love, the greatest display of man's hostility towards God, and yet God met it with love and forgiveness. I'll talk about that in just a few moments, but right now I want you to listen to Sandra as she sings one of my favorite songs that she has ever sung. And I think that if we ever want to give God what some have called the highest praise, 
It's not just to celebrate something once or twice a year like the crucifixion or the resurrection or even the birth of Christ. The highest praise and the greatest way to let my life praise Him is to trust Him every day of my life, to give my life back to Him because He gave His life for me. I said up front that this time of the year we celebrate Christ's passion and it displays the greatest act of love ever, the love of God by giving his own son for us and our sins. And it also displays the depravity of the human race. Christ had never done anything wrong. He never said one bad word. He never hurt anybody. He went everywhere doing good, healing, blessing. But because men love darkness and would rather be in control, they crucified the Son of God, for no reason. Yet God was in it. Now, if you read, and there's so much in, in Matthew and Luke and Mark, John, about the crucifixion of Jesus, but I thought what I would do for you today is to just highlight some things from God's Word about the Passion Week or the Passion of Christ. We know, of course, that he was betrayed in the garden by Judas, one of his very own, one of his chosen. It must have broken the Lord's heart. But Judas betrayed the Lord. Uh, we know that Peter denied the Lord and went out and wept bitterly. We know Judas hanged himself because of what he did. Peter went out and wept bitterly and felt that he had betrayed the Lord so greatly that the Lord would never have anything to do, in, to do with him again. So we find Jesus in the courtyard and he's mocked and beaten. He faces the Sanhedrin or the Jewish leaders who were the ones behind this crucifixion. We know that after he addressed them and they questioned him, Jesus was handed over to Pontius Pilate. And then Pontius Pilate handed him over to Herod. And an amazing thing happens. As in Luke chapter 23, um, Herod thought he found a way out of this. But God was in it. There was a man named Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a murderer. He was a convict. He was a vile man and he was in jail. And he was the one that was going to be crucified. But the crowd, in their darkness and their anger towards God, said to Herod, Give us Barabbas. Let Barabbas go. Take Jesus. Kill Jesus instead of Barabbas. They asked for a murderer instead of the righteous Son of God. But that's the gospel story, see? Because you and I were Barabbas. We were the ones that deserved to die. We were guilty. Jesus went to the cross for us. We were given back our life and his life eternal. Jesus became a substitute for Barabbas. That's what he did for you. That's why your life should be given back to him. Because instead of you suffering the eternal judgment of God, Jesus took it for you. Jesus died in your place. And then, as horrible as it is, and as many times as I've read it, preached it, from a child even to this moment, it disturbs me greatly to think that a human being, much more the Son of God, could actually be nailed to a cross. That Roman soldiers would take long spikes and drive them through his wrists and through his feet. And then hang him up for all the world to see. That is, that's barbaric. For the Son of God to suffer that kind of uh, uh, injustice. But God was in it. Jesus hung between heaven and earth. The king was on a cross. He was there for six hours. About halfway through his suffering, even the sun couldn't take it anymore. And it became dark. It was as though God said, this is so bad, I don't want anybody to see it. I don't even want to see it. So he turned his back 
and then turn the lights off so no one could see the horrors of this crucifixion. Well, you have to know that there were two crucified beside Jesus. One translation says they were criminals. And one translation says one of the criminals actually said, if you are the Christ, if you, if you are who you say you are, save us and save yourself. But the other, the other criminal looked at that criminal and said, be quiet. This man has done nothing wrong. Don't you fear God? And then he turned to Jesus and said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. That's the story. That criminal was with Jesus that day when they both died. And all he had to do was ask to be remembered by God. He, he didn't have to join a church. He didn't have to do religious stuff. He was allowed to be with Christ because he said, remember me. And then after all of that horror, the earth shook and Jesus looked up and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. What greater love could there have been? God is not angry with you. He's not angry with me. We stumble and fall and fail all the time, don't we? But we are his children. But in case you don't know Jesus, in case your God has been a religion or your security has been a denomination and you don't really know Jesus, let me tell you this, he's not angry. He's not an angry God. That will come later. Right now, he just simply says, I died for you. I've asked for forgiveness on your account. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That's a beautiful thing right there. It moves my heart. It moves every believer's heart because we have experienced the forgiveness of God through Jesus Christ. Well... Jesus died. They took him down from the cross. And they buried him in Joseph's tomb. And for the next three days, those that had believed in him were sad, disheartened, depressed, and discouraged. And that's where I'm going to leave it today. Because on Sunday morning, I'm going to come right back to this spot with great news and tell you that he did not stay in the tomb he is not dead. He is alive. And if he is alive, that means everything he said was true. Let me remind you now as we go through the next three days, God allowed Jesus to bear your sins. Say thank you to him. Look at him and say, remember me. It will be the greatest day of your life. God bless you and remember him as you ask him to remember you. See you next time.